You are the chosen one. Today, we're going to start on the bonus features. Hoping to just have one video of this, but if I forget anything, I'll go back and add it. So, back here, see, just check to see if there's anything interesting here. Nope. One thing I find interesting is there's double tap direction to dash, and always dash once able. Don't know why you wouldn't do that. You can apparently use bracelet arts with normal attacks if you, like, hold down the attack button. Don't understand that either. <laughs> but to each their own. What I want to show off today is, to start off, is boss attack. It's very similar to the one you've seen before, and obviously this isn't going to have any new opponents. It is sort of weird to go back to having no abilities after getting to the very end of the game, but not in a bad way. I'd also like to mention that I've recently updated my version of Fraps, and it seems to have fixed up some of the weird frame rate issues I was having, so I'm going to blame it on that. Because I'm not having any lag now, fighting the alarm, and I remember originally I had quite a bit. And I think it makes it clear rather obviously that I'm better at this than I might have looked before, because I haven't taken a single little speck of damage. Now I'm just gonna switch it up, ah, and of course I take damage after saying that. Regardless, this is going to be better than it was. Fireballs. Of course, now it's just about Dunn's Die, you stupid Delarn, because you can't possibly kill me before I kill you. Also, you have no control over your levels in this mode, which makes it a certain amount of difficulty. You can't just grind, you have to be good at the game. But they did something different in this version that they didn't do in previous versions, and that's in Felgana, much as with the game 6, which its engine is based off of, you can restart from the enemy that kills you. Meaning that, let's just say theoretically, I have a bad battle of luck against, say, Ligony, which is rather far in the bus rush you know, category. It'll take me a little while to get there. I won't have to start all the way back over again. All I'll have to worry about is continuing on from Ligony. That's just the tornado not her laser again. As mentioned before, in hard mode, she changes her attacks up quite a bit by doing things such as angling them upwards and other good fun stuff. I don't think we're gonna need to worry too much about Elfail. Good, strong hit, and Elfail is gone. Making pretty good time so far. Now we have the battle with Chester. Well, at least the first battle with Chester. Which is not even worth mentioning compared to the second one. He, in, you know, now that I think about it, in a very similar way, both of the recurring boss fights have a similar motif of they'll throw up a shield, so get in some attacks before you attack, but be ready to run back away. Um, Chester and Delarn being the two refights, and they share a similar philosophy. I would by no means say that Delarn is anywhere near as difficult, or imply anything even vaguely similar to that. But, there you go. You'll also notice that for some reason we have this set of equipment completely maxed out with Revolt, which actually, in a way, <laughs> will make this fight easier for me than I make it on myself. But I think I've actually managed a perfect run Chester, which is kind of a cool thing to do, I think, especially while recording. And now we have the rematch with... This time, you're not going to cause me nearly as much trouble, are you? And as said, he's not really going to. Um, in hard mode, of course, his massive speed upgrade, his ability to run and hide if he manages to hit you while he comes out, 
definitely does upgrade this battle, so don't go into hard mode thinking that, oh, I should have just started out on normal, or nightmare, at least if you're playing on the PSP port, where I, I forget if you can just jump to higher difficulties on that one. I know you can uh, on this one, I forget, um, just because, I'll be honest. I mean, the higher difficulties are something I tend to do on the PSP because it unlocks more features than what I'll show to many different modes do for the PC. But I prefer the normal difficulty mode. Uh, not that I find the game to, like impossible or like no fun on harder difficulties, but I think that they managed on normal mode to get it just about perfect. So it's sort of you know why mess with what was a great gaming experience. I mean, I'm obviously not bad at this game. And now that I'm not suffering from any lag, I'm doing pretty darn well at it. As you can see, there's a running total in the top for every single boss encounter. I'm pretty sure that right now, Morning Song is the one who I believe has the current score for my normal time run through. Because when she was over here, every time she visits, she likes to do a quick boss rush. Usually these don't end up so quick. There's quite a few bosses in this game, but the sentiment is there. And that's what matters. Oh, come on, Kula. For some reason I like to add an R to his name, but it's just Gulen. It's not Gulern, it's not Gulen, or anything else like that. Which is just a source of confusion to me. I have a tendency to mispronounce things like crazy. Also, something that always feels very weird is that every time I go through the game and then I do a boss rush mode, because it's sort of a tradition for me, I have to do the boss rush after I beat the game, I do so miraculously good compared to if I just do the boss rush over and over again trying to practice. So, if you are wanting to, like, professionally do the boss rush mode, play through the game fairly quickly? I don't know. I don't generally care about my time much, I'll be honest, which I think shows because my time is sucking compared to Aries right now. Not that by any means sucking compared to, to Morning Song is anything other than sucking compared to a genius, because she's actually pretty darn good at this game and can beat him on hard much easier than I can. I consider him on hard mode one of the greatest challenges early in the game because of just the fact that he's very much a no-mercy boss. And now we have Gelba. I went to the burning prison. What's really hard is that you really grow to love the double jump, and not having it feels very weird. Just because it's one of those things you get very used to double tapping. Yeah, yeah, you want me to kill you. Ow. Yeah, she's been more towards the edge. Galva, once again. Very hard if you don't do it right, but if you use a little bit of thought processes to it. Ow. Unlike what I'm ever capable of. <laughs> then, turns a fight. Okay, that was my. Xbox controller not responding. Uh, I know I blame things a lot, but that was really just button shoes there. And I might get to show off the refight figure uh, feature sooner than I really want to, considering that I'm not feeling this is difficult, I'm just being dumb. Let's see. I really do love making of the wind bracelet here. And while they gave a wind the wind bracelet a fairly cool name in PSP port, I, I admit wind spirit bracelet, it just works for me. I don't think you need to screw with that. Ah, that was a perfectly good waste of boost. But that's fine. It's pretty much almost dead anyway. Just need about maybe three or four more passes tops. Scalva is a boss that one thing it requires above all else is a 
fair amount of patience. In fact, patience can, as I believe I mentioned my first time through this game, make it one of the bosses that you don't want to tear your hair out about the perfect run. This is not true for me, due to my horrible, horrible lack of patience. Because, as you can see, this sucker might actually get to kill me, which is kind of embarrassing considering, like, even Spider One has been able to perpetrate this boss. And I've gotten pretty close. My patience just usually wears out before I can quite pull off that achievement. And since, I'll be honest, I would never try to perfect run this game, even its boss rush, I don't feel too terribly bad. This game is just not the kind of game you perfect run. Of course, I would have said that about Mega Man X a couple of years ago. So, who knows what the future may hold. But I'm pretty sure it doesn't hold me doing that. Sorry to disappoint anyone who's really helping out to look on perfect runs, or East perfect runs in general. Which is generally not that kind of masochist. Center. And you're dead. Thank you, Galva, for cooperating. You're doing a fairly good job of it. Pretty sure that I'm sucking as far as the tunnel goes, though. Or the for this record goes. And now I finally have my double jump back. Without any kind of button lag. Should be able to show that this boss is really not all that hard. I was really upset when I got it from PSP, because I got here. And I was doing really great against him on my first try. And usually, my first try after not having played for a little bit, I suck. So I was feeling really proud of myself. And then I hit the hold button on my PSP, and yeah, that made it so I kind of couldn't move. All of my buttons were frozen out. That was fun. Not doing as great this time as I did that time. And yeah, you can move while the Stursiva is propping out. Really, I'm just going to trade this the same way I did before, except for that I think I have less health this time than I did last time. Once again, just lowering his shots across one direction, and back to the other. Make sure he's going to do that, and not the one that just tears you apart. I think part of the reason that I like to do it without upgrading any of my revolve stuff is because of the simple fact that they like to upgrade your equipment with Revol in the time trial. It gives you a little bit of a boost compared to normal if you don't really do that. And the two armor sets I ever increase are the final two. So it means that fighting any bosses before those sets, I'm stronger against by far than what I would ever actually encounter playing the game normally. Which is kind of amusing to me. Just because, you know, time trial is supposed to be a difficult thing, but the way that they do it actually makes it somewhat easier for me than the normal game how I treat it. Open yourself up. Oh, now we gotta run away. He's gonna do this. Wanna make 100% sure not to run right into that with your face, especially if you're gonna blow around health. It's such a large amount of projectile attacks, but none of them are really too dangerous once you get used to them. That reminds me of one of Reimu's attack patterns from Perishable Night. She probably uses it in other games too, but I just remember it mostly from Perishable Night. Man. Oh wow. That was really close. <laughs> uh, I think that makes me feel kind of badass though, because I probably shouldn't have been able to pull that off. Alright. Liggity. This time I'm going to actually pull off fighting Liggity intelligently. By actually damaging the flame Liggity until it's actually within near death, so that I don't end up having to have her as the last one alive. She's the hardest one to deal damage to, so you want her to be the most damaged, because the others, like, let's face it, you get off so many more hits with all the wind magic, with your sword, that really you want the most dangerous ones to be easier to kill. Alright, I think that that's now wounded enough. Yeah, Liggity is not one of my favorite bosses when it comes to being easy for me, but I do love fighting Liggity. It's a fun fight that requires, you know, actually thinking. I like boss battles that require more than just run up and attack. Alright, ow. I should probably 
just boost to my next pass there. Always a very dangerous boss battle if you don't take it seriously. And I have a tendency of not taking things seriously. I think I did this right. Yep. Because there's no way at this point, I believe, that Greeny can manage to kill me. I don't like to have one alone. That much health usually is no problem. See? I'm good at what I do. For all of those who had any doubts. Once again, though, this guy is really not a problem. At least as long as you have good enough vision for those little invisible things he likes to send out towards you. Just keep an eye out for that, and you should be fine. The thing I have the most difficulty with is really is his final the swoop attack, which is mostly just because, well, the timing on it. It's just bad for me. As a personal thing, not meaning that it's like actually like badly programmed or anything. More just it's specifically one of my weaknesses. <sighs> I don't think I've ever actually pulled it off before. Using the rock that I used to protect myself to actually kind of hurt him. This actually turned out to be a sort of skill run on these bosses. I've never not had him grab me once before. Alright, now I'm about to show off how skill runs can turn for the worst very quickly. Let's take you out as quickly as possible. I do not like you, Death Valion. As mentioned, I have a massive damage upgrade, and my Earth Elemental attack is going to be stronger this time because I have that second Topaz. Because the game doesn't screw you like I screw myself. I need to get more mana on this. It's actually like getting charged. just enough time to switch back. And as you can see, he's a lot easier if you do a little bit of a revolve there. Which is also one little thing. If you thought this game looked a little bit too hard, the game does have it built in for you to not challenge yourself quite as much as I would like to. I'm just one of those crazy challenge running people. I don't do stupid things, like, I don't like not leveling up in RPGs, I don't like denying myself the ability to have fun with things, and the only reason that I like doing the, like, no buster, no damage stuff with the no buster in there is because that's how I used to play as a kid anyway. Since I was never really all that good at Mega Man when I was younger, I couldn't afford to use any Mega, any robot master weapons during the stage because, I mean, who knew? if that would actually be good against the boss. And my favorite Mega Man game as a kid was Mega Man 2, which, if anybody knows it, I mean, Metal Man's attack is strong against almost every single robot master. So you don't have the luxury of just thinking, oh, was, I know that this weapon is good against this robot master, I can use it now like crazy in the levels, because I didn't know that back then. I mean, there was no internet, and even if there was, I probably wouldn't have used it. I was one of those people that I only used it in preparation for my friends, which was that. Now he's dead. Hopefully I can do just get well against Zerg Huh, I don't think I've ever managed a no deaths run through time trial before. Which is not to say that it's impossible, but just that I personally do not believe I've achieved it. But I think I'm definitely doing good enough to be able to pull off this time, if I can just keep this up. So he 
is acting more like he usually does with me, that is not spamming his large laser attack, which I just, I'll be perfectly honest, I just never saw him spam that against me before. It just confused me in the fights I was having with him last time. One of those sort of, what? It's one of those things where if someone doesn't use an attack often enough, you can almost forget they have it. And that was how it was with me and Zeradosis. Whoa, I think this is the only time I've really, truly... I think it was because of all my practice with using rock attack through the game. It really is worth it to explore using all of your abilities that you have, and not just using the sword or rather wind magic. And now Zerodos is dead, which leads us to Chester 2. Vengeful White Knight. As you can see, you take a lot less damage with the battle armor completely leveled up, and you do a lot more damage with the battle saber completely leveled up, which is something that I do actually usually do, just because I don't like Jester 2. He is a very strong opponent. Not an opponent. And really what makes Valestine Castle the most fearsome for me. And I don't like Deathphalion if you didn't get the drift there, but that's mostly just because of my instincts for the spikes. Chester 2 is more of a skill battle in every single way, though. If only because you have to use the sword, and the sword is really the one that's the most skill-based, as opposed to, say, you know, spamming rock smash, spamming earth attack, air attack. Try to use your boosts intelligently, because they really do give you a very big advantage over Chester. In fact, I would argue they're your biggest advantage over the guy who otherwise has every advantage. He has more attacks, he, all of his attacks can hurt you, unlike only one flavor of your attack being able to hurt him, so it's important not to lose any advantage that you have over the guy. The PSP version makes him a laughable fight, though, since he does so much damage, so it's very easy for him to get you down low, and the super boost in that game well, it's just kind of a joke. Ugh, I might actually have to resume on this fight, too. I'm doing really decent. But maybe not, because he's down pretty low. Yeah, I got kind of cocky there. Of course, Chester would be my most difficult opponent. He always is. without a single death. I mean, that's not unheard of for other people, but I've just never done it. I think I can do it. Wow. Which means that I want to thank everyone who's going to watch this for seeing what feels to me is pretty darn awesome. Hopefully it's as fun to watch as it is to experience. Fires, I admit, not what it could be, which does make this fight harder for me than it has to be. At least Dilarn is weak against it. I still would recommend, even if you suck with the fire like I do, using it over using the sword just because it does so much more damage. Relatively, I have the health bonus because I'm in 217, 
whereas Delarn is at 1780. Which, compared to where we both started, puts me at the advantage. Once Delarn starts actually mixing up the sword attacks so they will all come out at relatively the same time, is really when you want to start being a lot more careful, using a lot more double jumps, and don't get used to the laziness that Delarn gives you early in the battle due to this, because really early Delarn gives you a lot of time to be able to dodge everything, and you don't want to get used to that. Especially once the laser suckers start coming out, I think after the next run of war right now. Yeah, I only need about one or two more runs. I'm not sure if I'll be able to survive that, but I will try my best. Because I'm feeling pretty good about this run. Yep, there we go. Delarn's down, which just leaves us with two more, the first of which being laughably easy, really. And I have lost to him before, even in normal mode. But not very often, I'll be honest. He's very much a boss with... I mean, he has a large amount of attacks, but none of them are really threatening to me. I mean, just... He's got really predictable attack patterns. He's got animations that really tell you what he's going to do next. And he has this attack, which is... I mean, Garland Missile! I can't call it anything else, it's, it's a joke. As long as you keep track of where his scythe is aligned, and remember not to try to jump when he's going to try pulling you in like this, you just keep pulling away as hard as you can. Come on. There we go. Ah, yeah. Do this again. Now does become a little bit more dangerous because he'll start using the over-the-shoulder slash. Oh, wow, this attack. I didn't even show this when I fought him last time. I'm sure to run in a circle around the, the arena. Probably won't even get to hit you with it. Don't suck me in. Come on. Flames to the purple balls, or the pink balls. 
Panther's a little bit harder to work with. Big balls. Slam. 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 And up. And now it's time for him to switch. Wanna try and hit his hands as hard as you can, then get back into a corner. Throw. And dodge the very last second. I recommend trying to get attacks in on his hands, even though you really don't have to to get him to switch out this mode. I recommend it. And I tried that strategy because I saw someone do a perfect run, or run, not a perfect run, but a challenge run against Galbalon, I think on Nightmare mode, where he did that, and he did it really awesome, so that's why I do that, even though it might not seem like the smartest thing to do. As you can see, the only thing I actually did faster was SS Schultiger. It's still the worst name ever. But I can still feel proud of that. And now for our next thing, we're actually going to cut. Let's see here also. Yeah, we could also could do some other difficulty modes. Inferno is only after you've beaten the game on hard. And that's some crazy, crazy stuff. There's a nightmare mode in between. As you can tell, there's a spot right there where you can go. But. We have some other footage to show off, and I'm going to show you that now. 